1996. Mm -hmm. uh, the first nine months of the year were presumably really tough uh, on you. Uh, you know, your now wife and daughter almost leave because of your mm -hmm. painkiller addiction. Uh, your sister was arrested for being in the car during a, a mm -hmm. drive-by shooting. Your brother drives drunk, gets in an accident that kills your close friend. Mm -hmm. What was the difficulty like for you involved with going through all that? Well, um, you know, I thank God that I made it through. Um, but I, I, you know, and I don't want to sound like, I, I don't want to say that selfishly because there were other people involved in all this that were directly affected or indirectly affected by the trickle down effect, if you will. You, you, the one constant through all that was football. And it was a, for me, it was a good place to escape. Um, and and I, I shouldn't say hide, um, but but I was able to just, it was kind of like talking to someone when I played football. Um, it was rather, it's kind of like going back to, you know, talking about when my dad passed away. I, I would much rather have been playing than to sit in a funeral home. Uh, and that's just me. Um, it gave me a way to escape, but also feel like I was actually doing something um, good, you know, or trying to do something good. I read the book you wrote many years back, and I, I was really surprised by how open and honest you were about the, you know, Vicodin mm -hmm. uh, addiction, which also, you know, 96, same uh, period. To what extent did you feel like at the time that you needed it to play well? I don't think I needed it. Well, I, it's been a long time, but I, I knew what I was doing. I knew that I didn't necessarily need it, but I, but I sure liked the way it felt. Um, and I knew it was wrong. Um, How did it feel? Well, I, with that, you know, I tell people all the time that I, I took 15 Viking and ES at one time and they, they're like, that didn't knock you out. And I said, it did totally the opposite. I was I was up. I was, and and that's kind of the way with addictions too. I mean, you what it what it's supposed to do, it it doesn't. So when, you know, you take two pain pills, you're knocked out, and you don't feel pain. You wake up, what four or five, six, eight hours later, I would be up and just talking and just. I mean, I was, I didn't want to sleep, um, until about ten o'clock the next morning when we were in offensive meetings. It was about the only time I wanted to sleep. <laughs> Not a good time to want to sleep. And and I'd doze off, leaning back into the, uh, like a coat rack in our quarterback meeting room, and so I mean I it was uh, and this went on for a long time. It wasn't just '96. Uh, How long? I mean, that's when that's when people knew about it right. because of the announcement. Um, I don't know. I mean, it started three years before, maybe. I mean, I'd, I was taking pain pills before that, but maybe not abusing them. How long were you taking 15 a day for? You know, I don't remember how the how the the dynamics of it worked, but say two gave me an effect that I liked. After a month, it, it two didn't do anything, so you needed three, and it may have been less than that. Mm -hmm. um, and then four, and then, you know, maybe so on and so forth. And I, again, I don't remember how long it took before you had to graduate up to, to more, but I knew that 15 was hard to come by. Um, it's hard, know, hard to get well, access a month, to. A month's prescriptions was, is 30, what is it, 30 pills or something, you know, uh, depending on what they prescribe for you. And, and I was going through that in two days. Wow. So I was having to hustle a lot. You know, I, I'd ask this guy for pills and that guy for pills and that guy for pills. And, you know, I mean, after a while, it got, you know, I was going back around pretty quickly. Did people start scratching their heads? I like thought, no, what? I mean, I was okay. the last one to know. You know, it's one of those things mm -hmm. that no one knows what's going on. Um, but like my wife said, she goes, well, everyone knew. But I thought no one knew. How'd you quit? You know what? I'd love to give you some big formula on how I quit, but I just, I had about four pills left 
and was trying to figure out how I was going to get more p pills again. And I don't remember the day or the exact moment, but it was, you know, not long after, um, actually this, right before we won the Super Bowl, somewhere in that, in that time frame. And I just, I mean, I had kind of hit rock bottom. I mean, I, I, I don't say, I shouldn't even say kind of. I mean, I, even though things around me seemed like they were good, internally I, I'd hit rock bottom. And I, I said, I'm gonna flush these down the toilet, the remainders. And, and, and I remember when I poured them in the toilet and it started to flush, I almost crawled in the toilet to go after them. Because um, I thought, what in the world did you just do? I mean, I just had such a dependency on those. And it's not, I was taking 15 a night. Um, any expert would tell you that's not the way to wean yourself off of. You, sh you should start with 12, maybe in the 10 and slowly decrease. I just went cold turkey. And I'm not, I don't say that braggingly, but I know that that was the worst month as far as any kind of recovery that I've ever went through. I shook every night cold sweats and just I mean, it was a it was a constant battle